What is going on guys? This is Trinkill and welcome back to Divinity Original Sin. Now, this is going to be some sort of a character build guide. However, this is not going to be building a specific character just yet. This is going to be more of an intro to character guides, if that makes sense. I want to make sure you guys know the intricacies of the game and the talents and the skills and the abilities before we start talking about why I choose certain abilities on certain classes. Now, again, there are preset classes, but when we get into any kind of build guides, I'm probably going to do min-max builds, builds that I think are the best or the smartest or the most fun. Uh, we're going to do party customization, and which I think are the most important as far as piecing a party together. And beyond that, we're going to talk about talents and skills and abilities and which of talents I think are the best, which abilities and skills I think complement each other, when you should be leveling, like the order you should be leveling your uh, abilities in and things like that. So... Uh, we're going to get into this real quickly, but first I want to make sure you guys understand that there are going to be some mild spoilers in any game guide that you look at. More specifically, I want to just point out I'm not going to ruin anything about the storyline. There's not going to be anything really big or game-breaking that's going to be involved in the spoilers, but there are going to be some game mechanics and the intricacies of the leveling system that we're going to talk about. So if you don't want to know that information, stop watching now. Uh, however, if you do want to listen, we're going to continue right in and we're going to talk about what not to do when you're putting a character together. Now, most guides are, here's how to make a blank character. This is the best character in the game. You should play this way. However, these games, these CRPGs are all about creativity and they're one player games. So they're all about fun and they're all about you choosing the character that you want to play through the game with. And I don't want to stifle that creativity in any way. So what I'm going to show you is things that you should avoid, pitfalls that you should avoid while you're putting your character together so that you have the best quality character that you can have, no matter what type of character it actually is. So before we get into anything, before we get into any tips or tricks or character creation rules or anything like that, let's go ahead and talk about the numbers behind the leveling system. And what I mean by that is we can't know how to min-max unless we know exactly how many attribute, ability, and talent points we're going to have at the end of the game. So right now, there is only enough experience to get you to level 20. There's no DLC out, there's no expansions for the game out yet, so you can only get to level 20 in its current iteration. Now, at level 20, you're going to have 15 total extra attribute points, 49 ability points, and 7 talent points. Now, there is a talent called Lone Wolf that grants you an additional 19 ability points over that 20 levels. However, we'll talk about that later. I don't necessarily recommend that for a great character unless you're trying to make the game harder on yourself. Now, if you're going for a challenge, then by all means, pick Lone Wolf. However, if you're just trying to play through the game on your first try, I would not recommend it. It's going to be a little harder than normal, again, unless you actually want that challenge. Now, from the chart here, you can see that you're going to gain an attribute point every other level, and that's on every even level. So level 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, you're going to gain an attribute point. You're also going to gain one ability point from levels 2 through 5, two ability points from levels 6 through 10, and three ability points from there on out. And you're going to gain one talent point every four levels starting at level 3. So at level 3, you will gain one talent point. You will not get another talent until level 7, 11, 15, and 19. So what do we learn from this chart? What can we deduce from all of this information? And for starters, the first thing that should stick out to you is the fact that after character creation, you're only gaining five extra talents. From the two that you start with, you're only gaining five more over the course of an entire 20 level, approximately 80 hour game. Now on top of that, unless I miss something, I have not seen any gear that actually adds talents to your character, but there are gear that add abilities and attributes. So again, talents are extremely rare. Please do not waste your talents. That is what I find to be the biggest pitfall in character creation in Divinity. Now another thing that we learned from this chart is that there are only 10 attributes outside of gear that you can put into your character after you've created them. So you don't want to spread yourself too thin, which brings me to my first topic. Let's talk about hybrid classes. Now there is a point in this game where you can create a hybrid that is too, for lack of better words, hybridy. And what I'm talking about, if you guys don't know what a hybrid class is, it's something like a battle mage, where you've got a half tank, half mage, or a shadow blade, which is a half rogue or assassin and a half mage. And you can do that. You have the freedom to make a tank, thief, archer, ranger, mage thingy healer if you really want to. 
However, your ability points and your attribute points and your talents are going to be spread way too thin for you to be great at anything. You're just going to be kind of average at everything or even below average if you spread yourself too much and you're not going to be good at any one thing. So there is a point where you can be a jack of all trades but definitely a master of none if you spread yourself too thin. So my strategy, and this is a strategy that I've used back in old like tabletop games like Dungeons and Dragons and even playing Baldur's Gate and Fallout back in the day, I like to focus on two attributes, no more than three attributes if I'm playing a hybrid class. For instance, my main playthrough on Divinity, I'm playing a Ranger. I'm focusing primarily on Dexterity, but my secondary stat, I'm focusing on Speed. So I'm putting most of my points in Dexterity, a couple into Speed, and I'm using Perception as a support attribute. So I'm basically, I'm actively looking for items that give me a bonus to Perception, which is going to raise my crit chance, which is going to raise my ability to hit from distances. Perception is also important for somebody who's using a ranged class. Now, if I was playing a Battle Mage, I'm going to have to focus on Strength and constitution already because I'm playing half tank and intelligence because I'm playing half mage but I'm also not going to want to just ignore speed and perception because those are going to help me gain action points in combat which is going to allow me to do more things once I'm in battle so I've got to focus on a lot more attributes than I do if I'm just playing a focused class like a ranger and that's it so you've got to walk a very thin line on how you build these hybrid classes you may actually bite off more than you can chew and end up with a subpar class to towards the end of the game. Now, in addition to spreading yourself too thin across your attributes, you can also make that same fatal mistake on your abilities. Let's look at the skills first, because the skills have something directly in common with your attributes. Man-at-Arms is your strength-based abilities. Those are going to be your tank abilities. Then you've got Expert, Marksman, and Scoundrel. Those are going to be your dexterity-based abilities, mainly because they require a bow or crossbow or a dagger for Scoundrel abilities to use. Then you've got Arrow Thurge, Geomancer, Hydro, Pyro, and Witchcraft. Those are obviously your intelligence-based abilities, and those are going to be for your mages. So you're obviously not going to want to pick Man-at-Arms and Scoundrel and Witchcraft, because now you're going to have to focus on strength, dexterity, and intelligence to make the most out of those skills. Now, not saying you can't pick those skills up and use their level 1 abilities just fine. If you find a level 1 ability in those skills that you want, by all means, put a point in it. I'm just saying you don't want to focus on leveling those skills up. Remember, without Lone Wolf, you only get 49 ability points to spend across all of your abilities. Now, when you're leveling a skill up, it takes one point for level one, two points for level two, three points for three, four for four, and five for five, obviously. So it takes a maximum of 15 points to get one of your abilities to level five without any items that are going to be adding to those abilities. So you've got to remember, if you're focusing on two specific skills, you're already spending 30 ability points on just two skills alone. That leaves you with 19 ability points to spread across 25 other abilities. So you've really got to make sure that you focus when it comes to choosing which abilities you're going to level. Now, in addition to focusing on skills, you're also going to focus on one weapon type. There's no reason to be focusing on bows and crossbows or two-handed and bows. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. The only reason I would ever use a separate weapon than the weapon I focused on is if I was trying to use an ability that required me to have a specific weapon type equipped. For instance, if I wanted to play my ranger with a few scoundrel abilities equipped, a lot of those scoundrel abilities are CC abilities and they require a dagger to use. So I would use my bow, I would use my regular bow abilities until somebody got close to me and started hitting me, then that next turn I may swap weapons to a dagger just so I could knock them down, or stun them, or charm them, or whatever I wanted to do. Now just because I'm using that weapon to use those abilities does not mean I need to put ability points in single-handed just to use that dagger. The the abilities work no matter how proficient you are with that weapon. It only matters how proficient you are in that skill. All right, so now that we talked about hybrid classes, what to do, what not to do, let's talk about leveling priority. Now, you'll remember from the chart that you gain one attribute point every other level, you gain one talent point every four levels, but the one constant is that you will always be gaining ability points. So let's talk about where we should be spending those ability points first and where we should be spending those ability points only when we have extras. I find it important to focus on your skills first. Getting your skills to level 5, one, not only allows you to use more skills and use those skills more proficiently, but it also allows you to get to level 5 in that skill, which unlocks certain skill-based talents, which are very, very game-changing. For instance, 
Once you get to Expert Marksman level 5, you unlock a talent called Quick Draw, which reduces 1 AP from the cost of using ranged weapons. That's a game changer. If you start with 12 AP, that's going to give you the ability to fire 4 times instead of 3, and that is a 25% increase in damage, not to mention a 25% increase in igniting somebody if you have a fire bow, or poisoning somebody if you have a poison bow. At level 5 in Man at Arms, you get a talent called Weather the Storm, which is going to give you an extra 10% times your Man at Arms level in extra magic resistances. So at level 5, which you have to be just to unlock this, you're going to gain 50% resistances to all magic. That's not counting the resistances that are already on your gear. Now on my playthrough, my tank already has a 90% resistance to poison without Weather the Storm. So if I were to gain Weather the Storm, I would be at 140 percent poison resistance. The interesting thing about this game is once you cross that 100% resistant threshold, that element actually starts to heal you. So you can see how important these level 5 talents are. They can be game changing in certain scenarios. Once I've leveled up my skills, I then turn and focus on my weapon. Now at this point, I've probably got enough gear to have bonus points in my weapon already, but now I'm going to focus my ability points there. At that point, everything else is situational. If you're playing a rogue style class, you might want to focus on sneaky. If you're playing a tank style class, you're probably going to focus on armor or shield specialist. If you want to make sure you don't get hard or soft CC, you want to focus on bodybuilding and willpower. It's all up to you at that point. I just find focusing on skills first and weapons second is the way to level. Now, in addition to that, I find it extremely important that at least one person in your party focuses on leadership. Leadership is a humongous bonus for the other three people in your party and should not be overlooked. Now at this point, I haven't really talked about personality or craftsmanship yet, and that is because I find those to be secondary abilities. What I mean by that is I may only focus on investing three points into bartering. That will put me at level two bartering, and then I can focus on finding other items that will increase my bartering level so that I can keep those on my person for when it's time to barter. Then right before I talk to the person, I go put on those items that will take me to maybe level five bartering, and then I sell my stuff. Now you can also do that with crafting, just keep crafting gear in a bag in your inventory, put it on when it's time to craft, craft to your heart's content, then take it back off, put your fighting gear back on, and go about your business. Now with all that being said, the main reason you do those two things is that so you don't have to invest a ton of points in bartering, charisma, blacksmithing, crafting, those types of things. So that about does it for leveling priority, but while we're on the topic of abilities, we've already talked about primary and secondary abilities, let's talk about abilities that I don't think matter at all. I would avoid putting points into charisma, telekinesis, lockpicking, and pickpocketing. I don't think any of those matter at all, as there are always other ways to get things rather than stealing or unlocking a chest or beating somebody in a rock, paper, scissors. Now, I will say if you do win a rock, paper, scissors, you do get a charisma experience bonus, but I don't know that that's enough to require putting points into charisma just to get that experience bonus. As far as lockpicking is concerned, as long as somebody is blacksmith enough to repair your weapons, all it takes is a few whacks with a two-hander or one-handed weapon, or, I mean, hell, you can even shoot it with a bow if you want to, but you can usually unlock doors and chests just by beating the death until they break. And pickpocketing is the same way. Why would you steal from somebody? when you could just murder them for experience. <laughs> so really guys, that's going to do it for this video. I've got some more stuff to talk about, but this is already getting a little long-winded, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it short here. If I feel that there's enough important information that I have left about building a character and creating a party, I'll go ahead and make a part two to this video, but I'm not 100% sure uh, how long that video would be. So let me think on a few things, and I'll put maybe a part two together, and we can finish off all of my thoughts on character creation. Uh, but until then, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me. Hopefully you learned something today. If you have any questions, please leave that stuff in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer it, and I will see you guys next time. Later.